A luta continua. Continua. A luta continua. A luta continua are Portuguese words that were made popular by Samurai Michel, a Mozambican revolutionary leader and the first president of Mozambique. A luta continua means the struggle continues. The words were first used by Dr. Eduardo Modlain, the leader of a Mozambican liberation group known as Frelimo. However, after the death of Modlain, his successor and the new leader of Frelimo, Samora Michel, made the words so popular that they became a rallying cry against the Portuguese colonial masters and throughout his rule as Mozambique's first president. Samora Moises Michel was a former hospital aide who became the first president of Mozambique after the country gained its independence. Mozambique had been under Portuguese rule for 470 years and its indigenes had suffered greatly under their colonial masters. Born on September 29, 1933 in Chilembene village in Mozambique, Michel saw and experienced racial discrimination from the colonial masters while growing up. As an aide in the hospital where he worked, he had observed that the white medical personnel were paid higher than the blacks, despite doing the same amount of work or even lesser. He had initially hoped to be a nurse, but lack of funds had hindered him from pursuing his academic dreams, as with many other African children under colonial rule. But his determination led him to get a job in the hospital as an aide while attending part-time night classes. The Africans were seen as a lower class of people by the Portuguese and treated as such. As one who grew up with a family of farmers, Michel saw his grandparents being cheated out of their hard-earned money by the Portuguese. Many were displaced out of their lands without any compensation by these Portuguese settlers. African families were torn between farming food crops for survival or cash crops for the Portuguese under oppressive rule. Most of the time, the latter was the case and they often starved. The white farmers were usually offered more money for their crops than the blacks. This segregation transcended other spheres of business and life in general. Many of the Mozambicans migrated to work in the South African mines for survival under inhuman conditions, and Michel lost a brother to a landmine accident in South Africa. Growing up in such a hostile environment spurred Michel to join an organization named Nucleus of Mozambican Students, NISAM. This organization consisted of students who had come together to protest the injustice being meted out by the Portuguese. Michel was an active member of NISAM and soon became a major target of the Portuguese government. Eventually, he fled to Tanzania, where many others exiled from his country had run to. In Tanzania, he came in contact with the group Frelimo, a shortened name for Frente de Libertacao de Mozambique, translated as the Mozambican Liberation Front. Frelimo was a Mozambican anti-colonial group formed by Dr. Eduardo Montlain. The group comprised Mozambicans who had been exiled by their colonial masters from their country to neighboring country Tanzania and had the support of Tanzanian President Julius Nyerere. Military training had been ongoing in Tanzania without the knowledge of the Portuguese. The group had been receiving support from the Soviet Union, Cuba and Algeria. Many of the Frelimo soldiers would get military training in Algeria and Michel was among the first set of soldiers to be dispatched. Frelimo had attempted negotiating the country's independence with the Portuguese, but when that proved abortive, they declared war against the Portuguese in 1964. At the time, Michel was only 30 years old. This war would last for 10 years, during which Michel rose through the ranks to become Frelimo's number one leader. Mm. 
Samora Michel's journey in activism started when he worked at the Miguel Bombarda Hospital. He joined the protest against discrimination against black workers in the hospital in different areas such as wages, allowances and work shifts. After returning from Algeria, Michel became an instructor at the Frelimo training barracks. Afterwards, he became the group's Secretary of Defense before attaining the highest position of Commander-in-Chief. On discovering the formation and strategies of Frelimo, the Portuguese formed a secret police force called PIDA. While the former had a member strength of about 8,000 soldiers, the Portuguese countered with about 50,000 men. In 1964, Michel led Frelimo's first attack against the Portuguese in the northern part of Mozambique. This would be the first of various revolutionary attacks preceding the country's independence. Samora Michel served as a very strategic and brave leader, earning the respect of his colleagues, including their leader, Eduardo Mondlane. Mondlane was a U.S.-based Mozambican who had returned to help fight for his country's independence. He had also pioneered the Nissan student group Michel had earlier belonged to. The Frelimo group gathered strength over the years until it faced a major attack from PIDA that threatened its growth. In February 1969, Frelimo's pioneer leader, Eduardo Modlane, was assassinated through a letter bomb delivered to his home. Upon Modlane's assassination, Michel became the commander-in-chief of Frelimo. In 1974, a coup themed the Carnation Revolution was carried out against the colonial masters who were eventually compelled to grant Mozambique its independence. Soon after, a peace accord was signed in Lusaka, Zambia, between Mozambique and the Portuguese, and a date was set for independence. On June 25, 1975, Mozambique became an independent country and Samora Michel became its first president. Frelimo's pioneer leader, Eduardo Modlane, had introduced the famous Aluta Continua phrase in one of his rallying speeches while addressing Frelimo's soldiers. It originally read, Aluta Continua, Victoria Aceta, spoken in the Portuguese language and translated as the struggle continues, victory is certain. This phrase was later picked up by Michel, which he used in his speeches, rallies and protests. Its popularity spread across Africa, symbolizing the fight for freedom, even after Michel's death. For the people of Mozambique, attaining independence was in no way an end to their troubles. The Portuguese had settled in the primary cities of Mozambique as early as 1506. But unlike other European colonial countries that sent their upper and middle class citizens to help develop their colonies, the Portuguese sent its lowest class citizens, who were barely literate. These citizens had to take up semi or unskilled jobs that were usually left for the indigenes in other colonial countries to do. This left the Mozambicans with little or no means of livelihood. No efforts were made towards developing the country they colonized, and this left President Samora Michel with very little to work with on his ascension to office. As such, the struggle continued. The struggle continues. A luta continua! A luta continua! Contra o quê? Against what? Against what must the struggle continue? Contra o tribalismo. Against tribalism. A luta continua. And what else must we struggle Contra against? Contra ignorancia. Against ignorance. Contra o analfabetismo. Against illiteracy. Contra a exploração do homem pelo homem. Against exploitation. Contra superstition. Against superstition. Contra miseria. Against misery. Contra fome. Against Contra hunger. Contra o pé descalço. Against lack of clothing. 
A luta continua. The struggle continues. Para que sejamos todos homens iguais. So that someday we will all be equal. Ficam sentem se orgulhosos porque foram colonizados pelos ingleses. Os ingleses são civilizados, se constituem um grande império. There are some who feel a certain pride because they were colonized by the English. The English are civilized and had built a great empire. E outros, porque foram colonizados pelos franceses e pensam que intelectualmente são mais desenvolvidos, mais civilizados, mais evoluídos, porque foram colonizados pelos franceses. There are others who think because they were colonized by the French, they are more intellectually developed, more civilized, more evolved, because they were colonized by the French. As president of Mozambique, Samora Michel began forming policies that contributed majorly to the growth of the country. Michel had Marxist principles and beliefs and began the nationalization of properties and plantations owned by the Portuguese. Schools and health centers were built in various communities across the country. Mozambique began to experience massive growth until fresh attacks were launched against it by a group named RINAMO, Resistencia Nacional Mozambicana, or Mozambique National Resistance in English. RINAMO was a group that consisted of white minority rulers from South Africa and Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. These rulers believed Mozambique's independence threatened their grip on the colonies and also disproved earlier theories of Africans being unable to govern themselves. Michel had allowed African liberation fighters like Robert Mugabe and other appetite freedom fighters to use some parts of Mozambique as training grounds, which enabled them to launch attacks against the white leaders. The Rhodesian white leaders then employed the strategy of divide and conquer by pitching the Africans against themselves through mistrust, internal disputes, and so on. This was how RINAMO was created. RINAMO's attacks hindered Mozambique's growth as they were launched on key facilities, railways, schools, and clinics that had been built by Frelimo. These attacks also led to the death of a large number of people and began a civil war that wreaked havoc on the country. The civil war would last for 15 years and drastically crippled the country's economy. Other natural effects like drought and floods also plagued the country, thereby affecting its economic state. Mozambique eventually had to seek help from the Soviet Union for funding to sustain the country. Having maintained a socialist system of government, Michel was shut out of receiving help from the United States and other countries that opposed socialism. Eu fui colonizado pelos portugueses. I was colonized by the Portuguese. País mais subdesenvolvido da Europa. The most backward country in Europe. <laughs> but still colonialist. Colonialismo é um crime contra a humanidade. Colonialism is a crime against humanity. Não há colonialismo Humano. There is no humane colonialism. No há colonialismo democrático. There is no democratic colonialism. No há colonialismo não explorador. There is no non-exploitive colonialism. In 1984, a peace treaty termed the Incumati Accord was signed to reconcile Frelimo and Rinamo. The agreement was on non-aggression and good neighborliness signed by Mozambique and South Africa's presidents, Samora Michel and Peter William Botha. The non-aggression accord stated that the South African government would stop backing the RINAMO and supplying them with weapons, while Frelimo would stop supporting the African National Congress, ANC, an anti apartheid movement. However, the agreement was broken off with South Africa moving RINAMO's operational quarters to Malawi and continuing attacks. 
Frelimo then countered by launching a joint Zimbabwean and Mozambican attack against Renamo, and the war continued. Eventually, President Samora Michel was called for further peace talks at the African Leaders' Summit, which was held in Zambia in 1986. While returning from this trip, Michel was involved in a car crash around the Mbuzini region in South Africa. Michel did not survive the crash along with other ministers and government officials of Mozambique. Although the incident was blamed on weather conditions and technical problems, there was a popular belief that the South African government had a hand in his death. This was tied to an incident that had occurred two weeks prior at the same location where the crash happened. South African soldiers had been injured by landmines at the boundary points of Mozambique and South Africa. Many believed that the crash had been a revenge act by the South African government. Panels were created to investigate the cause of the accident, but no substantial proof was provided to back up the allegations leveled against the South African government. Samura Michel was mourned across the entire southern region of Africa, and there were protests in South Africa and Zimbabwe over his death. President Samora Michel was only 53 years old when he died and had ruled Mozambique for about 11 years. Samora Michel's administration had a great positive impact on Mozambique. Although many other factors stood as major stumbling blocks to the nation's progress after gaining independence, Michel's legacy is one to be remembered for years to come. He was an inspirational leader who diligently worked to foster economic growth and development in his country. He believed in changing the mentality of the people in order to build a society and successfully inspired a sense of national pride in Mozambicans under his leadership. In 1999, South African and Mozambican presidents Nelson Mandela and Joaquim Chisano commemorated a monument at Mbuzini, the site of the crash, in honor of the revolutionary leader and others who died in the crash. A street in Harare, Zimbabwe, was also named after Michel after the country gained its independence. This was in tribute to a man who had given his full support in their fight for freedom. The famous Aluta Continua phrase, made popular by Michel, has now been indoctrinated by other groups, especially in tertiary institutions in Nigeria, as a chance for freedom and justice, a cause Samura Michel had died for. <laughs> We always have more stories like this to talk about, so don't hesitate to like and share this video with your friends. You can subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to receive the latest videos as they drop. Also, if you would like to know more about the assassination of Amilcar Cabral, do check out our next video.